Okay. So let me then spend uh, just a minute or two and quickly talk about the last two elements. Whoops, the last two elements of theory. Um, and so that's parameters, Nick. Okay, I've flipped back to payroll now for a moment. And in this case, what I want to do is I want to, and I'm, I mean, obviously, what I'm trying to do is make these pseudo real life examples. I mean, every customer is different, every requirement is different, but I want to use real files with things that could conceivably, could conceivably be, de be desired. So what I'm looking at here is the employee. Uh, history file, the payroll check file, and what I want to do is I want to look at checks for a particular employee, and I want to pull out some employee information, um, city, state, and hire date, for example, and I also want to pull out the check date and the gross amount for that date. Now, I want to create, and this actually is, um, is right uh, following Fred's comments here, this actually can be parameterized so that I don't have to make hard-coded changes every time. In other words, I can put in a spreadsheet in which the user simply modifies the parameter fields, in this case the from to date, and they get the data that they want for the period they want. Now, obviously, I'm using, uh, I'm using um, older data, so I've got um, check dates that are going back some time, but it doesn't change the, the example. Now, where this happens, and again, the mechanism of doing it in prior versions of Excel, the actual steps is slightly different. You do go out to data, you go down to modify your query, and so on and so forth. But in Excel 2007 and 10, they made it very neat. What happens is we come into here, and again, we go back into our connection properties, and I pick up the properties for the query that we've created, and I look at the definition. Now, what has happened here is if I look at my query, I've added a field, which is a filter field, but I haven't told it what the value is. So what I've said, in effect, is I want the data from the check history file for a particular check date, but I'm not going to tell it to you. And so you can see here, I've said I want the check date field from the from the uh, the KHIS file, which is the check history file in employee. I want the check date from there, but what I want it to be is greater than another field called start date and less than or equal to another field called end date. Those two, if you notice, have been put in square square brackets. That's the sign to most SQL processing programs that this should be a field as opposed to just data. I could put in that I want this to be greater than or equal to January the 1st, 2013, and hard code the date in there, and that would be fine. But um, it's, this, is, this is better because now I'll be able to actually enter the date. So if I say I want to refresh, it's going to now prompt me for actually the dates. And I'll say, let's say 0101. I've got to make them dates, 01 slash 01 slash 10. And I'm going to make it 12 slash 31 slash 10. I think I have some data for that. And now we have the data. It pops right out. Now, that's from the query function. And, and what I typed in there was just enough to make the query function work. But then when I come back and return this to Microsoft Excel, close this and close this, What's going to happen here is, in order to make a linkage between my Excel spreadsheet and my query, I have to take advantage of one other, one other neat thing that they put in here, which is we've looked in the definition here at editing the query, but we, now that we've added a couple of undefined fields, fields that aren't defined in the database, it now puts up a button here called parameters. And so it now knows that these two are potentially parameters and asks us where we want to do it. Well, I'm going to use get the formula, <clears throat> get the value from these fields. And so you can see I've got these values in G and H. And so simply doing that now means that I can run this whole spreadsheet for a variety of dates. I can now, what have I got? I've got check dates, one, three, four. Let's say I'm just going to look for March. So I'm just going to come in here. And I'm going to do um, March the 1st through 
March the 30th. And refresh. And now I'm only looking at those dates. So I've now got a neat way of linking my spreadsheet into my query and passing values into my query. Now, we're going to come back to that in a, a slightly more sophisticated fashion, but before we end the theory section, there's one last bit of query, that I, one last little bit of theory, so to speak, that I want to show you, and that is, um, I think I'll use this one, actually. This is fine. If we come back in into our connections here and look at the properties, definition, I said that these were the SQL statement. This is the SQL statement. Now, this SQL statement is actually modifiable. So I can cut this out. I can run, for example, WordPad. And I can go through and I can actually make changes to this SQL statement. So, for example, if I didn't want to uh, sort this by the home department, I could, sub, I, could, um, I could substitute sorting it by, for example, the employee number simply by taking this, changing this to that. It's now going to sort by that. I can then take this thing here, pop it back into this field, and now we're going to sort by the employee number. And now we're sorting by the employee number. So this is uh, as far as we're going to get in terms of programming. It's getting fairly close to real programming. But I wanted you to be aware that in behind all of this, in behind all of the magic, are SQL statements. And should you want to, and I'll give you a very specific example in a minute, should you want to, you can get in there and modify those SQL statements. And the program will work just fine because the SQL statements, although they were generated by a drag and drop, it's the SQL statements that are actually being used. It's the SQL statements that take priority. They're the ones. So if you modify them and you don't go back to the drag and drop, those SQL statements are the things that are actually going to be used. <laughs>